I'm going to go through the fabrics you can use to make your kimono or yukata. And I've made a companion PDF that's available free at the link below. I'm going to go through the whole gamut of fabrics and I hope I cover everything that you want to hear. But please let me know if there's a fabric you want to know about and I haven't covered. Have a look through the PDF, it might be in there as well. We're going to go through the different types of cotton, different types of silk, how to use linen, the man-made fibres and which one is best for you for your confidence level of sewing and on the affordability scale, probably the most important thing. I want you to make kimono and yukata, so come with me and into my Aladdin's cave of fabrics and kimono and we'll explore what I have here and what I've done with my experience in making these garments. So you've decided to make a kimono or a yukata. Fantastic. Let's talk about fabric selection. It is very important. There are a few things to consider and I have done a lot of the testing and the trials and the tribulations. I know what works for me. I know what makes something comfortable and I know what doesn't work as well. So I'm going to take you through the fabrics and show you how they work and how their characteristics affect the end result with your garment, whether it's a kimono or a yukata. I'm going to start with cotton. It is the most comfortable fabric to make a yukata out of. It is readily available. It comes in loads of colours and loads of patterns, loads of fabric types, which I've got all over around here. And it can also be really inexpensive and a great way to get your toe into making kimono and yukata without breaking the bank in case things go wrong with your first trials. It's a fantastic fabric to start with and I'm going to go through a couple of different cottons to show you what levels you can use and show you how they look and feel all in the same space so you can make the decision yourself when it comes to purchasing your fabric online. First thing I want to start with is voile. This is voile. So this is what I used to make. This is the yukata I made in the online course and it's using the pattern that's outlined in the pattern. So you can see me make this entire thing and I'll show you right now. It is very transparent. I chose it for that reason because on the online course I wanted you to be able to sort of see what I was doing, see into the layers of what we're doing, why we're doing things that certain way. So I'll show you the collar here. Do you see that? There we go. You can see right into the seam. So I had to be on my best behavior when I was sewing this because you could see any mistake I was going to make and I didn't make any. So I'm quite happy about that. I didn't use the seam ripper once, which is good. This is cotton voile. It is the lightest fabric you have before you move into a muslin or a cheesecloth. So it is still a closed weave. It's plain woven, and it's clothes woven, and it's matte, and it is extremely fine. You can see, I'll just turn this over and throw it up so you can see. Do you see that? It's like silk, but it doesn't have the sheen. It's completely matte, and it's, I, I wouldn't say it's slippy, but it's also not grippy. It's really good for linings and for undergarments. So you can imagine this as part of a sort of bridal truss. So you, you would have this underneath like as she's getting her hair done and things like that. It's, it's a fantastic fabric to use. It is fine. So it's not as inexpensive as other cottons are. So it is something that you might use once you've tried in a different cotton. Or if you're confident, go straight for it. It's absolutely beautiful. But I've also used it. I'll put this one away as a backing material within, so as part of the entourage of the garment. This is a cotton ikat on the outside and then inside I've backed it with the cotton voile in the navy colour. So can you see that? So you can see straight through to the pattern underneath and that's why I did it. So it has this sort of almost stained glass window like you're looking through something to find the pattern that's on the outside. And I also used it to completely line this kimono that I've made out of a silk Indian sari. So this is silk brocade with silver zari work. Zari 
uh, is usually means gold thread, but this is silver. Zari is Persian, it comes from the Persian Zarin for gold, and it, it denotes the, the type of thread. So these brocades that you would know if you think of, a, of an Indian sari, that's usually got Zari work on it. And inside, because this is so, it is heavy. Look at all that Zari work around the bottom, all that brocade. So I've lined it with a black voile. If I just pull it down there. The reason I've done that is because the motifs, these Hamzas and Butas, that run on the inside of the Zari are cut. Can you see? They've got, on the, on the reverse of this, the threads are cut around here because uh, it's a brocade, so there's supplementary threads and you cut around them so there isn't, a, you know, another whole layer of this silver work on the other side. And in order to cover that up, I've put in the black voile as a lining. And the reason I chose black voile is because this is already heavy and voile is so light that it doesn't really affect the weight of the garment. Garment weighed this much before I put the lining in and it doesn't weigh much more after I put it in because it's it's basically I put in that white voile yukata inside this so it's very very light fantastic fabric to explore and a great fabric to play with once you've maybe tried or once you're confident with making the pattern you can really have a play around with that and use it inside the pattern to line or back a garment also great for undergarments to wear underneath another say silk kimono or something like that next up i want to talk about my favorite fabric for making yukata and that is cotton lawn it is this i'm wearing it right now this is japanese cotton lawn it's uh, a western width fabric so it's not like say here i've got this is japanese fabric this is a tan mono for which you would make a kimono from it's not this width this was like any fabric you'd buy down at your usual store. This was 43 inches, 110 centimeters wide. And it is absolutely wonderful. The thing about lawn is that it is really comfortable. So we saw voile and it's extremely thin and transparent and lawn has those properties, but it's just got a little bit more structure to it and a little bit of a light sheen. So it's, it's, not, it's not a satin, it's a plain weave fabric. But because the cotton is so fine, it has a bit of a sheen to it. This is some white cotton lawn here. And you might recognize this because I just made the video right then about how to tear lawn to make your kimono pattern. So this is why I love lawn so much. You can tear lawn straight down the straight of grain and you go and buy three meters of this or 3.2 yards. You should probably buy three and a half if you want to make a sash. But anyway, you take your three meters or your 3.2 yards, you fold it in half and you tear it into strips like this and you've made your kimono pattern to the same width as this, uh, as the tan mono here. And it is so simple. I just made an entire pattern without actually, I think I made two measurements and I didn't, cut at all you just tear because it's such a beautiful fine fabric it's almost like paper i'll show you it in a navy blue here and this will show you that sheen that i'm talking about so because the the cotton is so fine you really get this satiny sheen to it but it's not a satin whatsoever and if i throw it up into the air i want you to see the the weight of it in fact where's my here it is this is a yukata I also wear every day, just like this one, that I made out of cotton lawn that I bought in Singapore. This really shows up, look at that, wow. You would think that was silk, wouldn't you? But it's not, it's got the, that warm, comfortable texture of cotton with that, the, some of the characteristics of a beautiful silk satin. So that is cotton lawn. If someone asked me what fabric should I buy, I would say buy cotton lawn, buy it in 150 centimeters or 60 inches wide. That's the best way to get it. If you can't get it like that, then get it smaller. I think some shops do it at 138 centimeters, which is I think 49 inches. 
in in the pattern and in the online course i talk about the two fabrics there's fabric a and fabric b fabric a is the wider one fabric b is the narrow one and we tear fabric a into four strips we tear tab fabric b into three strips if you buy a fabric that's a little bit less than the the guidelines of fabric a you can still do it into four strips and it will make a beautiful yukata so I think Liberty do cotton lawn and it's 136 or 138 centimeters. So just below that cutoff for fabric A, but it works perfectly. And if you just need a little bit more seam allowance, then you don't put in a center back seam. That is cotton lawn. Wonderful fabric. Get that. It is super comfortable in summer and in winter. You can wear it as a top piece like this just on top of your sort of house clothes. It's really comfortable once the heat's on. So you want to keep warm from the draft, but you don't want to start sweating in some enormous sort of engulfing <laughs> woolen number. And then in the summer, obviously you can just wear this by itself and it is fresh as a daisy. It's absolutely wonderful, easy to clean as well. So I've covered lawn and I've covered voile. They are fine cotton fabrics. They are not expensive but they are not inexpensive they're a mid-range and they can be very expensive if you want them to be now i want to talk about something that's inexpensive and fantastic if you're making your first yukata or kimono and that is poplin so this is one of the most readily available fabrics out there you can buy this basically anywhere. You can buy this in any color and it is usually printed in every print. Absolutely wonderful fabric. So it's a little bit heavier than lawn. Let me hold up a little piece of, I've got some white cotton lawn here. So you can see it's a little bit transparent. And then if I put the poplin over the top, do you see that difference there? It's just a little bit heavier and it is a fantastic fabric to sew this pattern with. This is from the online course. So this is what I use to show you how to cut up the fabric that is 150 centimeters wide or 60 centimeters wide. So the wider fabric. I haven't made it into one yet because I'm gonna line this for another video so we can all see how you line one of these garments. But this is cotton poplin. It is fantastic. It is hard wearing. It is inexpensive and it is a great way to try things out because if it all goes wrong you don't mind casting aside the entire project so i made my nephew who is nine i made him uh, a black yukata out of cotton poplin because i made his sister a kimono and he would have got sad if he didn't get something as well so i made him a yukata and he loves it he loves ninjago and and all those things and and jumping around but he also loves rolling around in the dirt and playing with worms and he can do that in this because it is hard wearing so my sister is happy when it comes in and she can just throw it straight into the wash which is really good and then i don't mind if he tears a big hole in it because it was an inexpensive fabric to use a very easy fabric to sew and i can make him another one in a day and send it back out to australia so it's a fantastic fabric to use definitely go and try this if it's your first one and you're a bit uneasy with sewing or or you don't really know the pattern that well give it a shot with this first find your measurements find what you should do first with your seams and everything by using the pattern and the online course and then you can go in and cut into a giant bolt of silk crepe de chine don't do that first get yourself some cotton first and try things out and cotton poplin is a great way to go are you afraid of silk I used to be, and I still, if I'm honest, I kind of am. I'm, I make things out of silk all the time now. Here's one that you may have seen. We're doing some shorts and I've done the video for this one. This is beautiful Thai silk. We'll talk about that later. I'm just proving that I'm not scared of silk completely. If you are, but you want that luxury, this is a fantastic option for you. So this is the wrong side of the fabric. And what I have here is sateen. You, it's cotton sateen, but you don't have to say cotton because if you say sateen, it means that you have a satin weave made from cotton. Silk satin and cotton sateen are amazing, very popular for making robes like this. So this is cotton sateen and it's, it's, a, it's almost a duchess 
satin. It is very luxurious. It is very thick and has a beautiful luster that if you looked at it, you would think that that was a Duchess satin, but it's actually, this is cotton. This is a hundred percent cotton. So there are some great reasons to use this. If you want to have that silky satiny look, but you don't want the characteristics of silk, which is perfectly acceptable and understandable, this is a great way to go. You can finger press this. You can with silk as well, but it just means that it's easier to use. It goes through the machine easier. It's easier to press. It's easier to wash. You don't have to consider it as much as you do silk. Silk is a fantastic fiber to sew with, and it isn't that hard. Please don't be disheartened about silk. It's a fantastic thing to use. But if you're not to that stage yet, but you want some of that luster and sheen, find yourself some cotton sateen. It's not, it's not readily available everywhere you go, but when you do find it, it is gorgeous. Look at that, in that, this is just silver, this is. It's also got a really interesting, it's just a sort of a drill back, but it's completely matte on one side and completely shine on the other. So it's a really interesting fabric and I can't wait to make a yukata out of this. So we're making kimonos and we're making yukatas, especially if you're making kimono. First thing you've probably thought of is silk. And why wouldn't you? It is the most amazing fabric. I did say in the cotton part that I'm scared of it and I still am, I'm happy to admit that. It is a scary fabric, but my goodness, it is the most beautiful thing you can ever use. And you will make the most beautiful things when you start using silk and using silk to its full potential. So let's take a look at a couple of kinds of silks and see how they'll affect your kimono. First of all, we have satin. This is black silk satin, black as midnight. It is, I'm gonna bring it forward. Look, look at that. Now, do you remember I talked about, in fact, I've got some here. Do you remember when I talked how this has a satiny finish to it. This is the cotton lawn. And it does, you can see that sheen. But when I come in, when I come in with that, I mean, all bets are off, aren't they? Look at that, it's like mercury. Absolutely gorgeous. This is black silk satin. Satin is a weave. Silk is a fiber. You saw before we had cotton sateen. So that is a cotton woven in the, sil in the satin method. This is silk woven in the satin method. The satin method has, you have warp fibers and you have weft fibers. And when you make satin, the warp fibers, instead of going out and in and out and in underneath and over the top of the weft fibers, they go out and then they float. It's called a float for five fibers and then they come back in. And because they do that, it means that they are exposed to the light and they reflect the light back at us, back at our eyes for longer. And that's why it has such a luster. And then within satin, there's another kind, there's all kinds of different satins actually, but there's another one that you might hear of and you'll see in your fabric shops and that's called Shamus. And that is when the float goes for more than five. So it can go for like seven. I think I've heard of them going for 10. After that, it can really catch like, snag on anything like a stocking but that's why so that will be a lot shinier and it's I'm going to talk about that actually because it is not a forgiving fabric to use if you make a single mistake if you rush one stitch and it pulls a little bit it's going to show up because because of that refraction the reflection of light means that anything that happens to this fabric is amplified because every shadow and every light is shown up. If you have the confidence, the patience, and you are used to sewing with silk, and especially silk satin, you will make the most gorgeous kimono. And I say kimono because kimonos are made of silk. And if you make an unlined kimono that is still a kimono, it's called a hitoe. So this is cotton, but if this was made of silk, and it had a closed collar like this, it would be called a hitoe, which just means an unlined garment. And it's what you would wear in the summer months. That's what you're making. If you're making a this garment and you're making it out of silk and it's unlined, 
it's probably a Hitoe. There's a little piece for you to know. But this is silk satin. It is not for the faint hearted because once you've made it, you will fall deeply in love and never fall out again. Oh, look how beautiful it is. It is so much fun. I've made a few like this and they took twice as long and that was literally just because I was scared. I was scared to cut and then I was scared to sew and I was sewing like this the whole time instead of when I'm using, say, linen and I'm just ramming it through the machine and it's all fine. <laughs> so do use it. Go out and make the most beautiful garlands you've ever seen. Make them for, for a bridal trousseau as well. A beautiful duchess satin through uh, in gold or, or ivory for the bride to wear as she gets her hair done and her makeup done. Absolutely gorgeous. It's a fantastic fabric to use and everyone should have a go at it at one time or another. In Japan, you buy your fabric in a roll like this and often if you buy it, it is already dyed and printed and made for you and then they send it to a tailor. So you would go to a kimono salon, usually at the top of a shopping center or in a beautiful boutique somewhere in Kyoto or something like that, or Tango. And the fabric's all laid out. It's put on little, it's displayed with the roll up here and then it's all furled down there and you can see the little motifs along it and it's absolutely gorgeous. And you'd sit down with the Von Deuce and they would, sit there and you would discuss how you want the kimono to be made, how you want the sleeves and the lining and all those things. That's fantastic. That fabric that you're buying the kimono in will most likely be something called chirimen, which is crepe. Now, that is made by putting the silk fibers into a solution, which then makes them twist and scrunch up like this. It reacts with the proteins in the silk to then sort of shock it and make it curl into a crepe-like formation. That's how Cherry Men's made. And then there's all different ways that it's then woven and treated in Japan. There's some Cherry Men, so this crepe fabric that they spread out. They only make it in winter. And then they put it out over the top of the snow, this pure white snow during the night. And that does something to it and, and, and people will swear, oh, I can tell that, that it's this kind of chirimen that's been in the snow and it feels fantastic. So there's a whole world of Japanese crepes just to have a look at. But silk crepe is, of course, one of the best things to use. Kimono in Japan are not often made of silk satin. They definitely were for the export market, especially after the Meiji Restoration and Japan started exporting kimono to Europe and to America, they made them from satins with big heavy embroidery because that's what uh, people from outside Japan saw the kimono as, as this thing covered in florals. And it's why we now would call a satin robe, even without the kimono sleeves, with just a slightly wide sleeves. If you saw a satin robe, with chrysanthemum or rose all over it in a really shiny polyester satin that crosses over like that, you a lot of people would call that a kimono. And that's why, because it comes from the export market that happened after the Meiji Restoration in the mid 19th century, when kimonos really started to come in to the closets of the Europeans and the Americans. But that's not what kimonos are usually made of. If you're in Japan, they have shiny parts to them. That's usually the embroidery or the gold leaf that might be applied to them. But the actual fabric is, you. they use a crepe. So I talked about chirimen and that's, that's what that crepe is. It's not about being shiny and, and having that luster. It's more about being refined and letting the decoration of the fabric be the star of the show rather than the luster of the fabric. Not to say that the luster isn't there. So this is silk crepe de chine, which I am currently painting. So I have it wrapped up very carefully. It's white and I'm gonna paint it with black because I am a glutton for punishment. So I'll just unravel a little bit here. Do you remember the voile, how that acted in the air? Look at this crepe de chine. Even with just, that's, that's like, that's eight inches. There's 20 centimeters of fabric there. And it is floating, not even like a leaf. That, 
that is air itself isn't it oh that is gorgeous so you can see there i've transferred a design of flowers in fact i'm making where is it oh that little kimono up there out of this one and some of it's done and some of it's not but this is silk crepe de chine and now i said it's not about the luster but the thing about crepe de chine even though it does have a matte appearance because it is crepe so crepe means that the the yarns have been twisted highly twisted in the chiramen they're treated with a solution that twists them and sometimes they are with uh crepe in regular fabrics as well and other times they're just twisted and it means that that gets that crinkle look to it but you still get a silky sheen is that coming through yeah look at that oh my goodness one of the most beautiful things so i said go out there and make something heartbreaking out of sat silk satin if you go and then make something out of silk crepe de chine it's going to break your heart in a different way altogether it is it is so refined and so beautiful so it's not out there and going look how shiny i am and i've used the most beautiful expensive silk it sort of wafts past and you go oh that's really nice and then you go oh my god what is that thing how is that shiny but still matte and and what is going on that is silk crepe de chine this is this is the best fabric you could use to make a kimono and it's why I'm using it for this which is you know it's hand painted and extremely highly decorated with a flower pattern have I got the I've got one of the very first I've got here the very first test that I did for this so this is the silk crepe de chine with the the flower painted on it and that's what this will be made out of it is extremely expensive it's extremely volatile you can ruin it by tearing it if you tear it it bruises you can you can bruise it with the iron you, you can bruise it with your sewing machine you need to use a different needle it's very volatile and is for experts but once you can do it you should do it because it's the most beautiful thing you'll probably ever make it really is it's just absolutely gorgeous that is the queen of fabric crepe de chine or any kind of beautiful silk crepe so most places that sell silk or sell upholstery will sell dupion remember that i said upholstery before because that's that is a point that we need to make this is silk dupion this is raw silk so it hasn't been dyed it is so beautiful i'm going to bring it right up to you so you can see do you see that it's just been the cocoon has been unraveled and then it's been woven into this beautiful thread the some of these some of these yarns are just enormous absolutely wonderful and i'll show you another one this is the one that i made the other day so this is a silk dupion as well dupion means that it uses a double cocoon so it's usually a bit a bit more expensive than say something like a shantong which has the same characteristics but is a little bit lighter so it has a larger cocoon and from that you get this thread that some people would call a linen look and it's called slubbing do you see do you see there's like a little knot just here and there's another one there and this is this is thai silk so this is hand loomed dupion and somewhere on it they have a little they have little red tiny pieces of fabric where they've tied the fabric back together because it's going on the loom and the fab the thread has snapped so it's really interesting fabric it's slubbed which means that it has thick parts and thin parts and little nubbles and knots and all things through it is very textured and it's a fantastic fabric to make a yukata or well a kimono out of like this one here i'll swing it round and show you what it looks like on so the thing about it this is a really soft one this is hand loomed this is from thailand it was extremely expensive and is worth every penny because of what it does you see if i put my arms down it just sinks straight down like that often a silk dupion won't do that dupion is very stiff because of the way that it's woven with those 
thick fibers and all the slubbing. So often it will sit. In fact, if I do it with this one, you'll see, I'll unfurl it. Do you see the structure in it? How it, how it sits straight out when you put it on. Oh, it's beautiful though, isn't it? So it's still got a lot of structure to it. And the thing about it is that you sort of form a relationship with Silk Jupion when you make something from it because the garment changes with you. As you wear the garment more and more, the fabric starts to loosen. Your, the, your body heat will do it, but it's more time than anything. And the garment will then start to mold to you and mold with your body as you wear it more often. Now these are kimonos, so they're not like, you know, we're not wearing them right up against our bodies, but it just means that instead of being straight out like this, it will start to fall down like that. And then you'll have this, this thing that you spent time priming and now, now is a beautiful flowing garment with all this warp and weft and texture and slubbing through it. It's something that you, that you, you sort of learn to love you do <laughs> when you first make it it's really fun to make because it presses well and it has a lot of structure to it but when you first start to wear it you go oh i don't like this this is awful it's like wearing straw you feel like a, a scarecrow or something but once it once you've worn it for a while you really start to sink into it and it sinks into you and it is it's the best way i can describe it it's a relationship you have with this kimono where the two of you come together over time it's not love at first sight it is when you see the fabric, but it isn't once you've made it. So it's it's a fascinating thing to make because it is an it's an amazing process to go through with something that you've just sewn, to then go through that process. The same thing happens in Japan with um, a type of fabric called a samugi and an Oshima samugi, which is the one you might have seen on YouTube. They dye the fabric by putting it into volcanic mud. And that makes the fabric really stiff when you first buy it. And the thing about an Oshima Samugi and a lot of Samugi in, t in Japan is that you have to wear it for a long time for it to mold to you. So it becomes like the, the pair of jeans that you love. You don't wash them then you, and then they become, they become part of you over time. So it's a, there's a lovely thing there about it, and it's a fun thing to do. Jupion is readily available. It's in the most beautiful tones. You can buy it in every jewel tone you can think of, gold and silver and bronze, and make something truly spectacular. In fact, I'll show you. <clears throat> like this. So then, one thing about Jupion is it is thick, and canvas like which means that you can paint it and make something well something otherworldly this is one of the most beautiful things i've ever made in my life um i've made a few of these now in different colors for for people but but it is one of the most it's one of my f favorite things i ever made you can see it's a kimono and it's got a coastal banks here on it and I painted it with gold and when you're using Jupion you really can do this just with a paintbrush and some gold paint and gold leaf and anything you want silver but gold is obviously the most gorgeous and you can then turn the the garment into a canvas so not only have you got that relationship where you start to wear it and it and it molds to you you can also have that relationship where you spend time painting it and really decorating it for a long time. It becomes part of, of your of your house. It's it's you know as it's as important as the grandfather clock. It really is wonderful. I've got to say, this hasn't molded to me yet because I never wear it because it's too nice. <laughs> it's <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know if anyone else does that. You make something that's so nice that you actually. I'd, I would never, I would never wear this around the house or, or to anything. I would only ever get it out and maybe put it on the stand for a few days and then put it back in the cupboard because I'm scared that, that something will happen. The sunlight will ruin it or, or I'll walk past a cup of tea and accidentally spill it. Um, I think if you're making something that beautiful, you're doing something right. If you, if you love it that much, then, then you've created an object of true beauty. And, and that's really what, you want to be doing with your time anyway. So that's Silk Jupion. I'm going to move on to Habitai. 
Habitai or China silk is a silk that is plain woven. We talked about the Dupion silk, that's plain woven, but it's got the large slubby texture to it. And we talked about satin, that's got no texture to it really, but it's then woven in a certain way to give you the sheen and luster of the satin. This is Habitai or China silk. So it is one of the most famous silks out there. It isn't used as much in sewing as I think it should be because it is one of the most amazing things you can sew with. It's fantastic. So it can also come in so many different weights. This is Habitai and it's 30 grams a square meter GSM. 30 grams a square meter. It is light as air, light as a feather. No, it's lighter than a feather. It's literally nothing. It is just, I talked about using voile for a lining earlier. This is, this is the next level down because silk, silk is lighter than cotton. Just uh, if you have the same amount of each, the, the silk will be lighter anyway. This is, this is another level altogether. This is Habitai and there's another level below that called Silk Page, which goes to about 20 grams a meter which per square meter which is nothing if you start to look into the grams and in the pdf that that comes with this i've listed all the 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 regular gsm that you would get with the fabrics that i'm going through this is super light it's fantastic for lining this is an indian silk sari made from tusa silk so wild silk which means that the the silkworm got out it bit its way through the the cocoon and it means that the the silk threads are shorter and longer and all different lengths you don't just get a mile of continuous thread the way you would if you boil the cocoons the silkworm has left which means that there's a hole in the silk and you get all different kinds it makes it a bit more a bit more interesting not like a dupion where there's big slubs and things like that it's still processed and made fine but there's a there's a beautiful texture to a tussa. Um, I don't know if I can really show. You can kind of see it there. Do you see it's like different coloration through it? Absolutely gorgeous. So this is this is extremely high quality Indian silk, and I wanted to line it with a habitat. This is actually a silk page, so it's the finest the finest silk you can get before you start going into open weaves really. And can you see there, again, like with the other Indian sari that I used, I've done it because of the cut work around the motifs. To cover that without adding, without adding a gram, honestly, this has not added a t an inch of weight <laughs> to, this, to this garment. It is still as light as when it was just the, the Tussa silk by itself. But also because it's this beautiful white underneath, it gives this the appearance, because this is light itself, gives it the appearance of jade or celadon. It's like there's a glaze happening here. It looks, it's, it's the color of rain. It's just so beautiful. So that's what I use that for if I'm lining it. And it's a fantastic fabric for lining because it is so light and so easy to work with. But China silk doesn't stop there. I live part of the year in Thailand and a lot of my fabric comes from the silk markets in Thailand, right in Bangkok. There's a big place called the Silk Zone. If you're in Thailand, you have to go there. Go to the shops with the most colors on the wall of different colors of silk. They sell the best silk. That's what I've learned and it seems to be true. I've, I've found great silk from them. This is the kind of thing that they can do. So this is China silk, but it's Thai China silk. So it's plain woven. I'll bring it right up. But the colors you can get are, well, if you can think of a color, they've got it basically in their shop. It is honestly like walking into a box of Derwent pencils. Every color you can imagine, and they sell it by the yard or by the meter, which is fantastic, because you might have noticed that I'm not very good at imperial measurements. <laughs> you may think I'm great, and that's wonderful, but I am not. So it's good that they do the conversions for me. And look at these jewel tones you can get. Aren't they just gorgeous? But the thing about it is you get 
Again, you get that stiffness I talked about before. This this will come away with wear and wet while you're sewing it, but it's got it's it's light enough that it will drape, but it's still a plain woven fabric, and it's silk. So what it is is it's the best part of being a cotton lawn because it's as light as a cotton lawn, and it's as beautiful as a satin but it's, it won't show up as many mistakes and it's a bit more hardy than the satin. So it's a really good fabric to sew with and you can also paint onto this and it takes paint quite well. I know that for a fact. But if you're in Thailand, if you're in Bangkok, go and buy this, it's fantastic fabric and compared to say in Europe, in the UK, um, fabric like this would probably cost about 30 pounds a meter and in Thailand, it costs 10 pounds a meter. So it's a little bit, less expensive fantastic fabric to buy go to thailand it's a great excuse to jump on a plane and go to bangkok and get yourself some amazing china silk next fabric i'm going to talk about is linen linen is so comfortable it is not as inexpensive as cotton and it can cost a bit but it doesn't have to cost the whole house you can buy it and when you do buy it it's very hard wearing and useful all year round this is one that i wear all the time this is a linen yukata i wear it as a yukata i wear it like this and i wear it all year round so it's fantastic in the summer obviously because it's linen linen is naturally absorbent and it absorbs 20 percent more than nearly all other fabrics when it comes to moisture so when it's hot it makes you feel cool because it absorbs your sweat but it stays light while it does that the best thing about it is winter and i never thought that would be but in winter this is the most comfortable thing to put on top of your winter clothes so when the heating's on i don't actually put the heating on but the people below me and the people above me both do people below me probably affect me more with it when the heating's on i get hot and there'll be a draft in the house, so I want to cover up, but I don't want to sweat too much. And this is fantastic for that. It allows you to cocoon yourself without being sweltered by the heat that's around you. So it's a fantastic, you never think of it, but it's, but in this, this style, so making a garment this size that wraps around you and you can, you can really wrap up in, this is a fantastic fabric for winter garment. Also, this check, it's absolutely beautiful. Doesn't it say sort of winter, you know, wonderful. So this is made in the exact way that the pattern is. You can see I've got the long sleeve there and the collars closed over. I did put in a coat hook as well. It's a really good fabric. And I made a few different linen kimono, in yukata in my time. Here's another one that I painted. Linen takes paint really well. And I, I made this, I just wanted a black linen yukata i made it in the same way as the pattern and the online course so using that exact method and then afterwards i was sat there and i don't know what had happened i think i was jet lagged and i just got out my silver paint so i've got some silver fabric paint there i got out a little bottle of that and i got out a bit of water and a paintbrush and i just went spare and i painted this all freehand just sitting in my in my studio one night so it's a it's a set of grass that i saw once on holiday i saw a grass just like this and i took loads of photos of it on an island and i wanted to paint it onto a kimono one day and then i did i painted it onto my linen yukata um as i sat there jet lagged not knowing whether up was down or if i was drinking tea or petrol but look at that, see how it passes across the sleeve? So that's fantastic and it's warm and I can wash it. It's a really good fabric to use and can make some properly beautiful things. When you work with an open weave linen and start thinking about the summer and going to the Mediterranean and sitting and having drinks in the afternoon in that hot Mediterranean sun after the beach, and then you just cover up with a linen of this weight. So here we go. I've talked a lot about open weave and gauze and, and muslin. This is a muslin, so it's a really open weave. Can you see that? You can see straight through it. Now, if you are using an open weave, it is hard to sew because the sewing machine 
sort of catches some of them and pulls them in because they're so far apart, the threads. A great way to get around that is to put down some seam tape so you can get a really thin bit of um, cotton, like some really fine cotton tape and put that down. Or there are actual tapes that are made out of sort of paper and glue and stuff that you can put along your seams and sew with that and it'll sew it fine and it'll be absolutely beautiful. Um, and you can sew it just without it. It will still make a wonderful garment. In fact, I think I have one here. I do. This was a tester I did to see how the paint went onto it. And it turned out absolutely beautiful. So there's the garment. Doesn't it look, there's something about linen. I talk about in the PDF, I've mentioned linen has a shivery drape. Do you see how it shivers? Just, I, I can't explain, I can't explain it more than saying it's shivery, but there's something about the way the fibers work that it does shiver with its drape and it feels different when you're wearing it and these sleeves are shivering behind you. It's a, it's a really nice feeling. So here I got, this is done in the same way as the online course and the pattern and I've painted it just to see how the paint would go onto it with this black grass down here as well. So you can see that I like painting linen. It is, well, linen was used to make canvases for arts as cotton was as well. So it makes sense that you would use it. And when you see the garment, it is literally just a canvas. So you can go for broke. But can't you imagine just swanning down with your sunnies on, going for, a, for an Aperol in the afternoon in the med wearing this absolutely fantastic and this whole thing just it, it weighs nothing it literally weighs the, the air just goes straight through it because it's an open weave so it doesn't even really catch the air that's how light it is I, I wish you could feel this because compared to some of the others say the silk even compared to this silk hand loomed Thai silk and this it's it's literally it feels like that it's the weirdest feeling to have something so large and to have absolutely no mass to it. So that's linen. Get yourself some linen. Linen comes in all kinds of things. Linen comes in mixes, which is really good as well. This is a cotton linen mix. So I'll bring it up. You can see it's a really interesting, fantastic weave. And you can really create something quite, quite mesmerizing out of it. I love linen in its sort of in the linen color, in these raw, raw sort of earthy tones. But it also does look good in a beautiful jewel tone and it takes color really well. So have a look at linen and when you're going for cotton, if you're making your third or fourth garment or 40th, which I probably have by now just for myself, <laughs> consider a linen yukata they really are a great addition to your robes so i've talked about a lot of fibers and all of them have been natural fibers when we talk about affordability this is where you can really do some trial and error and work with things like a satin without having to really push the boat out as far as the cost goes so first thing i want to talk about is man-made regenerative fabrics so that is Semi, you can also call it semi-man-made, it's rayons. Rayon is the generic term for a process of making fabric. It's where you pulp fibers or cellulose products, so um, woods and barks and things like that. You put them into a solution, turn them into a pulp, and then they're squished through like a spaghetti strainer, but a very, very small one to make long fibers. That's how you make things from rayon. So rayon also includes modal and tensile and lyocell and viscose they're all part of the rayon family they're made by getting semi man-made they they're natural products that are put through a man-made process to create a fiber at the end this is a rayon dressing gown that for some reason ended up in my suitcase at the end of a stay at a famous hotel in hong kong that's all I'm going to say about that, but I'll tell you about the fabric because it's fantastic and do not write to anyone. So this is a beautiful damask rayon. You can see here it's got a reverse of the front. So it's got a crepe. No, ah, it's got a drill 
weave on the front and a satin weave on the back and it is so so comfortable and you can see there so you can see here this is the benefit of rayon is that this is quite a comfortable fabric and it's still a little bit breathable it's you know it's not it's not like a linen but it is breathable and is comfortable it doesn't feel like wearing cling film but you get all of that and this weight it's, it's got a lovely thickness to it because it is a damask so it's had a there are supplementary threads the you know the pattern's been more woven uh, while while this has been loomed and it is extremely beautiful fabric but it doesn't cost nearly as much as its silk equivalent would silk like this would cost you at least 40 pounds a meter um and this would probably cost i'm guessing 12 if you bought it at the right place it's it's not that expensive but it's super fantastic for making kimonos and yukatas out of and in japan they have a, a real groundswell of people making kimono from rayons and man-made fibers that can be put into the washing machine and they are sewn by machine which is a very new thing for japan so all kimono and yukata in japan are hand sewn and they cannot be washed they have to be sort of taken apart and set across a set of rollers with steam coming through them to wash them and if you do anything too drastic they just uh discarded you can't you can't use it anymore so i have a friend who got a little bit of vodka on the collar of her kimono and that kimono is now done so they've moved to some of these fabrics that you can wash and that can be so you know you can wipe this down with a cloth if you want that's how that's how useful it is it's about durability and affordability and they are fantastic for it so this is a black damask rayon or a jacquard you might call it um, and these are readily available if you find a, a shop that sells asian fabric so your chinese brocades and things like that or an indian brocade store they will probably have something like that with the double happiness or a dragon on it and it will make an amazing robe um, that's for certain then you have <clears throat> so that's your rayons and if you go further into that something like modal is one of the most comfortable things you can wear against your skin so if you are making something for the bedroom and to be worn with lingerie or pajamas modal is a fantastic fabric because it's so soft it's the it's actually it's softer than silk or anything like that and it's really absorbent it's fantastic for a layer underneath your clothes to give you more warmth because it's it's almost as warm as cashmere so it's a really fantastic fabric if you see modal buy it and make something from it because it, it will it is an amazing fabric to work with all my undershirts a modal and i don't own an actual winter coat i just wear layers i wear a modal undershirt a shirt and then a cashmere sweater and i've walked through the snow with that so there's there's some advice for you if you see modal buy it and make something from it it's fantastic fabric last but not least by any stretch is your polyesters and poly blends so we've talked about satin now for the third time this is a polyester satin that I bought for sampling years ago and I still have I haven't used it I really like this color it's absolutely beautiful and it looks fa fantastic and it does everything that satin does but it obviously feels a little different when you wear it because it's polyester so it does cling to your skin if you get hot I, as I said before I'm a big guy I, c I don't really like to wear them because I feel a bit clammy when I wear the, the man-made fibers like this but they are fantastic and they're inexpensive so they're great for finding out what you need to do and also for making something that otherwise you might not be able to afford to make like if you these Indian saris are extremely expensive that one costs hundreds of pounds to make the be a better example I've got one here this is another one for trialing this was very inexpensive i bought it from a very well known uh online store that does next day delivery i think we all know who i'm talking about it's not the nile and i got this for not much money at all i got so you get six meters of fabric and it is completely made of polyester maybe there's a bit of cotton or a rayon cotton like fabric woven in loads of lame 
which of course is a is a plastic fabric this is all this shiny stuff here that's what lame fabric is but it's inexpensive and it's fantastic for trialing or for creating something that you otherwise couldn't afford so like i said those saris cost cost a fortune whereas this one i can try stuff out and try cutting it differently and making the kimono in a different way without cutting up something that also is you know hand loomed in banarasi or or kanjivaram and you don't want to just cut up to try something out you need to know what you're doing before you do that but a fabric like this is a great way to get those looks that you otherwise might not be able to achieve and they're also great for for the thinner fabrics as well so once you can get some air through it the clamminess isn't as much of a problem so this is a polyester georgette and that is fantastic I mean, you can see that it's quite see-through it's almost got a suede effect to it because it's not silk or cotton it, it they really are obviously there is a whole world when it comes to man-made fibers and you can literally get anything you can think of in man-made fibers and they're a fantastic way to to make the kimono and make something truly wonderful but not have to spend as much money and they're, they're brilliant for that i hope this helped and i hope i helped you make your choice easier when it comes to what should i buy for making my yukata or kimono if you're making a yukata get a nice light cotton find cotton lawn or use cotton poplin that will be absolutely perfect and it will make a beautiful yukata and if you're doing it for the first time remember i talked about cotton poplin it's inexpensive and still comfortable so it's a great way to try out the pattern and maybe if you're following along on the course use a nice cheap fabric so if you do make a mistake you can start again and it's not going to cost you a bank but once you start to explore it it is endless you can move into the man-made fibers with lame woven through it move into silk brocades and heavy duchess satins make the most gorgeous fabric you can and then of course the one <laughs> with the gold paint on a jupion you can you can do that and you can break your own heart with with the beauty that you've created it really is a whole world out there for you to create and it starts here. Make your first yukata, make your first kimono and let it let it begin.